everyone. In this video, I have a chit chat, get ready with me. Um, really, we're not doing any type of uh, talking about makeup or any type of skincare. It's just basically me just kind of sharing some stories with you, just um, giving you all a chance to get to know me a little bit better. I know that this is a long video, but I hope that you will stick around to the very end because I do have a little bit of a giveaway for you all. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I thought that I would just sit down. I'm getting ready to put on some makeup to do a couple um, other videos. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn the camera back on. Um, I did a little get ready with me yesterday. Um, and anyway, I asked you all what you thought. I've had some really good feedback on it. So I thought that I would just kind of sit down. And anytime I'm going to get ready to do makeup, I'll just sit down and kind of share just, you know, different stories with you all or whatever. So anyway... Um, every product that I'm going to be using, I will definitely list everything down below. So, I thought that um, in one of the uh, comments, um, one of the gals here had asked me about my horses. So, you know, I mean, when you have like, I guess when you have grandkids, you know, he didn't like talk about the grandkids or the kids or whatever. So, I guess what I'll do is I'll kind of start out, you know, a little bit about my horses. Um, and I think the most appropriate one I'll start out with is who started it all, and that's the big white horse, Jake. Um, he, several years ago, well, I've had Jake almost, I guess, about 13 years, and um, I don't know, we have a, a property um, out in the country, another play area, and there's almost a thousand acres there, and uh, some People had brought some horses one weekend, you know, and uh, just kind of got me interested. And I was like, man, that would be fun, you know, to bring a couple horses down, you know, for the weekend with us and go trail riding and everything. So when I got back um, that weekend, that Sunday, I got online and I started looking. And, um, you know, I was glancing and I was like, oh, this one's pretty, you know, and everything. And I printed it off and... Then I went and looked at some other ones, and I was like, oh, you're pretty too. And then I came across a picture of Jake. And um, I was like, you, you're the one. You are the one. So I printed the picture off and uh, took it in to my husband. And um, it had a good description of Jake. And uh, he looked and he said, are you out of your mind? do you know how big this horse is? And I was like, well, yes, but I want him, you know. And he goes, Marsha, he goes, that's that's crazy. He's huge. And uh, I said, well, you know, that that's I want him. That's, that's the horse that I want. So he said, well, you might want to call the gal, you know, and see if she still has him. So the next morning I called um, the gal. She had her phone number and everything. And this little voice answered the phone. Her name was Megan. And I said, Megan, and she said, yeah. And I said, I'm Marsha Woods. Do you still have my horse? And she, there was silence, and she goes, I'm sorry. And I was like, do you still have Jake? And she said, yes. And I said, I want him. And she said, okay. And <laughs> having horses now and, you know, purchasing other horses, I mean, that's just not how you, you know, purchase a horse. I mean, you know, you, you just start out differently. So she probably was really thrown off, in, you know, in that way. And um, so I said, well, I, I want him. And she said, was like, okay. And I said, you know, my husband and I were going to we'll plan on coming down this weekend, you know, to, you know, see him and everything. And she's like, all right, that's great. And I said, um, you know, do you want me to go ahead and wire you money? What do you want me to do? And she goes, no, that's okay. She says, um, I've got somebody that, you know, wants to come look at him. She goes, but I'm pretty sure that they won't buy him. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I want him, okay, um, you know, having purchased, you can't, you cannot sell him, you know, so I'll, let me wire you money or whatever. She goes, no, 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 that's not necessary, you know, if you want Jake, you know, that's fine. So we went down there that weekend, and um, it was down um, on the other side of San Antonio where she was, so it was a, you know, a good little drive, but we had spent the night at some friend's house, and uh, so we pulled up, and Robert saw him and he goes, you are out of your effing mind. I said, no, I'm not. I was like, look how big and beautiful he is. So um, anyway, we got out and um, I had brought Jake some treats. And um, I just, I mean, I just had, I fell in love with him. 
And um, so Megan, uh, she wrote him, and uh, her, her husband wrote him, you know, and everything. And then I got on him, and Megan sat back behind me. And uh, so she was like, okay, um, you know, this is, he steers, you know, whenever you use the range, you know, he plow reins, so it's not like, you know, you put the rein on his neck, you know, and he goes that way. She's like, you got to pull him which way you want to go. So I was like, oh, I've got that easy. And um, so anyway, he was just, I just loved him. I just loved him. And so um, we agreed to everything, and um, I said, she said, well, when do you want to pick him up? And I was like, well, that's a problem because I don't have a horse trailer. So is there any way that you all can bring him to me? And she said, uh, yeah, she was, we'll have to look at our schedule and everything. And um, so anyway, I went back to, and Robert, you know, he was like, and you're going to have to find a place to keep him to board him, you know? And I was like, yeah, I, I need to do that. <laughs> Get in this horse and have no place to put him. And uh, so I went home and um, I started, you know, searching. I wanted somewhere, you know, really close to where I lived to um, keep him, you know, so that I, he was, you know, easily accessible to me. Several places that I went to, no. They were like, no, he is too big. He will take down our fences, you know. And I was like, no, he won't. He's a good boy, you know. And I was, I was getting close to out of options. So there was this one lady that I went and um, because she had a big shire and I thought, well, she'll, she'll let me keep him there, you know, certainly, you know, because he's a big horse, Jake's a big horse, they get along great. And um, she said, well, to be perfectly honest with you, she says, I'm a little scared of them. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? I said, by any chance, do you know, you know, somebody? She said, I do. I actually do. So she made a phone call. And, um, this little gal showed up and she showed up in this little Honda car. And at the time it, it kind of reminded me like a clown car because she got out and then, you know, it was like another child got out and then it was a German shepherd that got out and it was like another kid got out and another German shepherd got out and two more kids got out and I'm like, come on. How many people are going to get out of this car? And the little gal, she came up, and I'll never, ever forget her, ever. I mean, I'll, I'll have to tell more about Candace some other time. I mean, she's just amazing. But um, anyway, so she um, came up, you know, and she had this beautiful, she's from South Africa, and she had this beautiful little... Um, South African um, accent to her and uh, so the gal that I was with you know explained to her that you know I had Jake and he was coming in and he was Percheron and um, she said yeah sure you know and so I was like oh my gosh yeah I got a place to put my horse and so I went over the following day it was about five miles away from my house so that wasn't very you know that was that was very doable for me so I went the next um, day to go meet her and to go look around. And I remember driving down that driveway. Um, you know, there was this beautiful black pipe fencing. And um, I thought, oh, there was just horses on both sides. You know, pasture over here with horses and pasture over here with horses. And you drive down a little bit more and there was more pastures with horses. And um, so I thought, this, this is perfect. This is the place, you know. And, uh, so made all the arrangements and everything. And, um, she, um, yeah. So anyway, um, Megan was going to be delivering Jake. And, um, so it was like a four hour drive for Megan. And she called me and she says, I have a problem. I said, what? And she said, well, I made the mistake and let Jake out of the trailer to walk him for a little while because she had a small trailer and Jake is so big. She said, now he won't get back in the trailer. I was like, oh no. She goes, yeah. She goes, we are on a rest area and he will not get in the trailer. And uh, so she said, we're, we're, you know, running behind. So finally, I guess they got Jake in the trailer and Megan got him, you know, to me and everything. 
And um, I just, just remember, I mean, you know, I had family members there at the barn, you know, excited to meet him, you know. And uh, so there was just all these people. And um, Candace, you know, it, she had other boarders there as well, you know. So there was just like all these people. It's just like a big, you know, big welcome, welcoming wagon, you know, that Jake was going to be, you know, coming to the barn, you know. And it was just so wonderful. And um, so I remember um, going in the barn and um, Megan had come in. And she said, okay, she goes, well, we're going to leave. And I was like, okay. And uh, so she hugged me, and we both just started crying. And she said, you know, she, she was, you know, she was upset because she didn't want to get rid of him. But she, you know, knew that she really felt that, you know, I would be a really good home for him. And I was just so, so, um, you know, grateful to her, you know, for letting her, you know, give me the chance to have him. So we were standing there just bawling like idiots, you know, and she's like, just please promise me, you know, that you will take good care of him. And, you know, and I was like, oh, honey, he will never, ever want for anything. And she said, you know, if you ever do go to sell him, you know, and I was like, honey, he's never going anywhere. He's not. And so, um, you know, like 12, 13 years later, you know, I still have Jake. And um, Megan and I, we, we still stay in contact. And um, so it's just, you know, it's just so wonderful. And a couple years, I guess it was about a year or two years ago, Megan uh, messaged me and she said, Hey, I'm going to be about an hour away from you in a couple weeks. She goes, I would love to stop by and see Jake. And I was like, that would be so cool. And uh, so she stopped. And um, it was so weird because Jake stood for like an hour with us. You know, he just hung out with us. Uh, you know, all of the, in, in the other horses that I had, you know, they were all off grazing. And he could have easily walked away from us, but he didn't. He just stood there with us. It was like he knew her. Um, it was just so, so weird, you know, and, uh, it was, I don't know, it was just so strange, but, you know, it was just such a great, you know, great thing to, you know, be able to share that with, you know, with her so many years later, you know, because if you're in the horse, you know, if you have horses or if you've ever had horses, you know that horses, a lot of times you, they exchange, you know, they get passed around quite a bit sold to this person, sold to that person, you know, so, and a lot of times, you know, you lose contact with people, but, um, anyway, it was just, you know, so wonderful, so, Megan and I, we still stay in contact, and I share so much about Jake, anyway, because I just adore him, and, um, so anyway, that is how I got Jake, and, um, Oh my word, so many, so many stories with him. Um, let me back up my camera real quick. All right, so I have gone ahead and did my eyebrows and I was just, I, I thought my camera was on and it wasn't. So um, anyway, talking about Jake. So, um, you know, I really liked him being clean. I mean, you know, even though he was white um, you know, I mean, I just wanted him clean and, uh, you know, I'd show up to the barn and he would just be dirty and that just drove me nuts. So I'd have to get him and bathe him. And let me tell you, you, you go out and wash a camper or a bus. And because that's about the extent of washing Jake. I mean, it's not, it was not an easy task at all. And, um, you know, Candace is like, okay, he doesn't need a bath every day, you know? And, um, so he would make me so mad. I would spend so much time bathing him. I mean, so much time, you know, grooming him, you know, and drying him. And I would put his uh, mane, I would uh, take like ponytails all the way down his mane, you know, and I would use real pretty pink bands or, you know, whatever on him. And um, I have a picture here that I'm going to show you. But, um, Anyway, I had spent so much time on him, you know, and everything, and um, Candace had let him out in this other pasture, 
and um, we were going to just go hang out for a while. She goes, I'll go put him out here in this pasture for, you know, just let him graze out there. So she put him out, and she came back in the barn, you know, we were getting ready to go eat or something. And she goes, uh-oh. And I said, what? And she goes, um, Jake didn't like his bath. He didn't like to be clean. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, he's in the pond. I was like, what? She goes, yeah, he's in the pond. Y'all gotta see this. This hangs on my refrigerator. So that, yeah, that's him. You can see his little, his little mane's all braided and everything. But yeah, he had gotten in the pond. And I was like, hi Candace, I can't believe he did that. He's all dirty again. And she goes, you are not bathing that horse again tonight. So anyway, I was so mad at him. I was like, why do you do that? I bathe you and spend all this time on you and you go get in the pond, you know. He's like, I'll show you. I don't want to be clean. But that was just, you know some of the funny things that he would do. He was, he was so funny. And, um, I had a, uh, Kenneth had a, uh, a pony. Uh, her name was Halo. And so she ended up putting Halo in the same pasture as Jake. Well, this pony and Jake bonded. They were, became very good friends. And, um, you know, it got to the point where, you know, ponies can make not good choices. So I would go out to get Jake. You know, I'd jump to the barn to go out in the pasture and get him. And Halo would take off running, and Jake would go follow, follow his little pony, you know. And I was like, Candace, this is, this is not going to work. You know, Jake is making bad decisions. And uh, she goes, well, I'll just put Halo in the pasture beside him, you know. And I was like, okay. So she got, got Halo and put Halo in the pasture beside Jake. And so we'd walk back to the barn and we were hanging out the barn. And Candace is like, oh, I don't think that's going to work either. And I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, come here and look at this. So I was looking out the barn door. And there was a pipe fence that separated Halo and Jake. Just a pipe fence. A beautiful, I mean, big pipe fence. And Halo was standing on the other side of the, the fence. Jake had reached over and was biting her on the back of her mane and he picked her up by her by the back of her neck and brought her back over into his pasture and set her down and they took off trotting and I'm like oh that did not just happen and this is like yes it did I was like oh my word but I mean she was fine she was perfectly fine but I mean for him to just pick her up you know, by the back of her neck, he's like, no, it's my pony. You can't take my pony. And I said, Candace, I was like, Boy, you got to do something, you know. And so Candace ended up moving her um, a little bit further <laughs> away from him. But, yeah, Jake wanted his pony. It was just so funny. He was so funny. He loved that little pony. And uh, then we put a, uh, a little donkey, a little miniature donkey in with him one time. And her name was Margie. Yeah, Margie. And we thought, you know, they would be fine together. Well, Jake bonded with the donkey. And Jake thought, you know, Margie was precious. Margie was. But again, Margie made bad decisions for Jake. And so we were, um, we had pulled um, Rick and Rico down to the country, to our place in the country. And so Robert had pulled the horse trailer in. We had a we have a big four, huge four horse trailer. And so we were loading up the horses and uh, Jake and uh, the thoroughbred that I have, Kate, they were always, Jake would, it was Kid and Snaz and then Jake and then Kate were loaded in. And um, so we got Jake loaded on and we closed doors and everything. Well, Margie starts braying. She's braying and she is mad that we are taking Jake. So Margie starts running around the trailer, acting like a crazy full donkey and braying and just making all sorts of noises. So now Jake is inside that trailer and he wants his donkey. And he starts throwing a wall-like fit in that trailer. And that trailer was just rocking all over the place. And I was like, oh my word, Candace. I was like, get us out of here, you know, he's going to tip that trailer over, get that donkey, you know, 
So we got the, the gate open and Robert drove out real quick. But that stinking donkey was just, I mean, she was throwing a fit. And Jake, just all he wanted, he wanted his donkey. That was all he wanted. He was like, I want all the trailer. I want off trailer now. I want my donkey. So I was like, Candace, I was like, you got to move the donkey. You've got to move the donkey. Because, again, Jake, Jake would make bad choices. But it was just so funny. So funny. But he's just such a sweet boy. He really is. And uh, Candace would have um, kids, um, like uh, Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts, um, whenever they would be wanting to um, earn, I think there's some kind of rewards or badges or something that they earn. And so they would have to go do like community uh, work or something, you know. So they would always come to Candace's barn and, uh, you know, she would have them pick up rocks, you know, and things like that and help clean water troughs. And, um, you know, so then afterwards they could pick one horse and she would uh, take them a ride, you know, walk them around on the horse. Every time they'd always pick Jake. And uh, so, you know, these little kids, because he's so big, she could put like four or five little kids up there on him, you know, and walk around and it was just so sweet. And she would send me pictures with all of these kids just like piled on him and standing around him. I mean, you know, and some of them were just so little. They were just like, you know, came right up to this belly, you know. And um, he was just, it was just so sweet. So, okay, I'm getting more talkative here than I am doing my makeup. But see, I could just go on and on about, about my horses. And, um... Jake, um, let's see here, he started um, not feeling good, not feeling good at all. We were noticing that something was a little off with him that came out and figured that after a while of running tests and trying to figure out what was wrong with him, um, we discovered that he has a disease called equine polysaccharide storage myopathy. Too long to go into, but anyway... Um, he, um, the, there was no cure for it, or there is no cure for it. You can, um, kind of like keep it at bay a little bit, you know, by a special diet. And, um, so this diet is high fat, high fat, high fat diet. And, you know, at the time, Jake already weighed like 23, 2400 pounds. And, you know, he's big already. And, um, so it was low starch and all this and he wasn't supposed to have any type of green grass, uh, no sugar. I mean, it was just, you know, poor quality of hay. And so I put him on that diet, you know, and it just, it just, he didn't, he just wasn't acting right. He really wasn't. I mean, he would get up into the, um, the barn to eat and he was so fatigued that he would just go stand, um, you know, in the in the corner and not eat. And I called the vet, and the vet was like, well, Marsha, we might have to go ahead and put him down. I'm like, no, no, you're not putting him down. And uh, so he ended up, he thought, well, I'll give him an appetite. So I'll give him a shot of Winstrel, which is a, um, it's a steroid. Jay? thought he was a 2,400 pound um, Casanova. He did. He, he thought he was Mr. Uh, Mr. Lover Boy. Because what it does is, it um, even though Jake is a gelding, which means, um, you know, uh, he's kind of like neutered. It's neutered, yeah. And so, you know, you take all that away, you know, you take all of that drive away. Well, that shot made him think he was no longer neutered. And so he was looking for love. <laughs> he was looking for love. And he would, oh, I would take him, be walking him, and he would be pulling me everywhere. I mean, you know, he was like, no, I think this is a, a girl over here. I want to go over here and check her out, you know. And I'm like, no, no. And, um... So anyway, he, you know, there was a couple times where, you know, he did, he drove me all over the place and it just got really bad. And, um, so we had taken him down to our property and him and 
you know, we were out riding, trail riding, and um, there was a fresh plant, uh, oak field that had just been planted, and it was really, it was beautiful, and so Candace, you know, she goes, hey, she goes, why don't we just stop right here, you know, and just go ahead and untack them, we'll just, you know, walk the saddles and stuff over, and just let them graze here for them, I was like, perfect, you know. So I had gotten off Jake, and I took the saddle off of him, and I had just taken his bridle off. And lo and behold, the property that was beside ours, they had a couple horses, and they were at the fence line. And Jake saw them. He spotted them, and he thought, ooh, some hot babes up there now. We're going to go check them out. So at that time, he just took off running, took off running. And I was like, what in the world? Because I didn't see him. And Candace was like, oh, there's those horses up there. And I was like, oh, and I was like, well, the gate's closed, you know, you can't go up there. And <laughs> I leaned down to pick up my saddle. And um, Candace, she goes, uh, he took the gate down. And I'm like, what? And I turned around and we had a, like, it was like a 14 or a 16 foot I'm talking heavy-duty gate, heavy-duty gate. He plowed through that gate and was l going to go see, check out them girls. And luckily, they were geldings, you know, so he stayed at the fence line. And I was like, Candace, he, she's like, he's going to take that fence down. He's going to be in another county by the time we get a hold of him. So anyway, I was like, you bad horse. And I called the vet, and I was like, okay, can you... Can you, you know, make it, make that drug in him stop? And he's like, no, Marsh, it's got to wear off. And I'm like, no more Winstrel for Jake. No more. <laughs> that horse. I'm going to back up my camera. Got to back up that camera. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so, yeah, the drug finally did wear off of him. And, um course you know he went back to being very lethargic and everything and um, I just made the decision to um, you know I just um, Candace is like you know you what do you want to do because the way all of the fat the high fat that was given to him I mean it, it was just it was really making him worse I mean he was just deteriorating and I called in another lady and she came in and she's like, you know, he's, he's like a, his arteries and everything is like a cesspool. And, you know, she said, you've got to get him off of all that stuff because, you know, he's just gotten so, so much inflammation and everything in him. And so, you know, she said, you have to look at it this way, quality, quality of life or quantity of life. And she said, what would you want? If, you know, if you were Jake, what would you want? Would you want all this crappy food? and not be able to be a horse and I was like no I wouldn't want that I would want to be able to be out on the pasture you know and be with everybody else and she's like exactly and that's what I've done that's what I've done Jake you know he's not on any special diet he wants to go graze on green grass hey that's fine have all you want buddy and the weirdest thing was is that he started doing really good and um so anyway that's that's kind of what, you know, I, I do with him, and, um, boy, have I taken some tumbles on him, though. I have. Um, you know, Candace and I, we would, <laughs> I take him to horse shows, you know, and show him sometimes, and, uh, I always get, everybody would always ask me the same thing. How do you get up there? How do you get up there? You know, to ride him. And, um, you know, usually what I did was either Candace would give me a, a huge leg up or um, I would park him beside a truck and I would jump up on the truck, it, on the truck bed, and then jump up on the side of the truck and then get on him. And, you know, that's how we rolled. And um, it was just, we had so much fun. And uh, Candace, we had uh, gone down to this big, huge arena one time. And we'd taken Jake, and she said, I want to ride, ride him. I'm like, okay. So she got on him. Well, she had forgot. She had little spurs on her boots. She kind of forgot about him. Of course, neither one of us knew at the time that 
Jake didn't take too kindly to being spurred. And uh, she accidentally touched him on the side with her with one of her spurs. And he started bucking. I mean bucking. And she held on a couple good times. And then like on the third time, I mean, she came off head first, just landed right in the arena. And my Aunt Judy was with me. And I thought, and I told Judy, I said, oh, dear God, I, she has broke her neck. I know she's hurt. And about the time Candace jumps up, she's mad. Oh, she's mad. And so she goes over and she gets Jake and I get up there to where she is. And I said, oh, my word, honey, are you okay? She goes, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I said, okay. I said, well, let's go ahead and go. She goes, oh, no. Oh, no. He's not going to buck me off and get away with it. So she took her, she took her boots off, and um, which is very unusual for Candace to have shoes on in the first place, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that sometime. And uh, so she took her boots off, and she got on him, and she rode him, and he was pinning her ear, his ears back at her a little bit, and she get on to him. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. But yeah, she, uh, she did not take any crap from Big Jake. But it was so funny, though, because, you know, with him having been so big, yes, he's very intimidating, and he intimidated me a lot, and he, he knew it. He really did. There were times where we were, you know, be out, and he started this, like, he would trip. Like, he was, like, trip, you know, when I was riding him, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, you know, and it, it would scare me because I thought he's going to fall down. And so I would go, okay, Candace, stop. I went off. I went off. You know, is he going to fall down? And so he figured out that if he started walking and tripping, that I was going to get off of him. So it became a habit for him. And But I'm telling you what, when Candace would get on him and he would pull that on her, who would she get on to him? And he wouldn't do it anymore. She goes, just get on to him about it. <laughs> I would try to get on to him about it. He put his ears back at me. I'm like, okay, no, we're good. We're good. And, um, you know, because he, he is so big. But, um, yeah, oh, Jake, he is something else. And uh, he's, he's just the best, best horse. I just couldn't have asked for, you know, I mean, I mean, for my first horse, he's just the best. Really, truly. Okay, so we're just, oh, my word. See y'all get me started about my kids or, you know, whatever. And I'll just, I'll just take off, you know, just blabbing here away. But, um, so yes, it, today is the first day that it has not been raining. Um, or it would have been, I think, 11 days straight. So today, the sun was out earlier and, uh, I had gone out and fed the horses and everything. And I went ahead and moved them over into another pasture and uh, they had their raincoats on, so I took their raincoats off and uh, let them get some sunshine. And so hopefully we're just going to continue to have really good days because I'm fed up with all this rain. I mean, it's just too, too much rain. But, okay, let me think some other things I can tell you all here about Jake or whatever. Candace and I, we would... <clears throat> she started getting me into doing horse shows. And uh, so we would pack up, you know, a couple horses and go do horse shows. Well, I mean, she always had some really, really nice horses. And uh, so, you know, I, being the goofball that I am, I love the color pink. Y'all know that. Well, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, they got pink ribbons. Candace, they got pink ribbons. I said, I want to win a pink ribbon. She goes, no, you don't. Pink ribbons are fifth place. She goes, you don't ever, ever want a pink ribbon. I was like, so I, yes, I do want a pink ribbon. And so anyway, I had gone out and uh, shown a couple of horses and everything, you know, and I was getting, um, you know, like first, second, or third, or whatever. And so I was riding back. And there was a gal beside me, and she had gotten fifth, and I was, I was like, I think I'd gotten first that during that one, and um, so I looked at her and I said, I said, would you trade ribbons with me? I really want a pink ribbon. She kind of looked at me, and I was like, would please? 
And so she's like, sure. So we traded ribbons. So I ride up to Candace and I've got that pink ribbon. She's looked at me and she goes, you won. You won. Now where's your ribbon? And I said, I traded with that cow over there. Oh my word. She got so mad at me. She's like, duh. I'm going to come here and do horse shows with you, and I'm going to do all spent my time with you, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to do that crap. So I was like, okay, okay. So yeah, but I did get my pink ribbon. I did. I kept it. And uh, there was another time we were at another horse show, and we would get up. Oh, my word. I just go on and on. We would get up, you know, uh, real early and I we usually took like three or four horses and Candace was in charge of all the horses and I was the rider so I was you know different classes you have to change clothes blah 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 so the um, thoroughbred that we've got that I've got out of here Cade well I was showing him in English so I was in there and um, you know, I was being judged, and it was in a huge arena, and the judge stands in the middle. So I'm up there, you know, and I'm riding Cade, and we are looking. I mean, I'm like, you know, running through all the checklists, and, you know, we're posting on the, the everything, and, you know, got my reins good, my hands are good, I'm up straight and everything, Cade's looking great. And I look kind of glance out the corner of my eye, and I see that judge is looking at us. So we're, I mean, we're looking good. And about that time, Cade just stopped. I mean, he just put on his brakes and stopped and I look over and the judge turns his back on me and I'm like oh my word so I'm like Caden I'm trying to pull him up you know and he wouldn't so I turn around and I look down there and see he stopped to sniff a pile of poop yes he stopped to sniff a pile of poop I was so mad at that horse. Oh my word, I was so mad at him. So finally I got his head up and we went on and everything while we were standing. And I think I got like, I, I ended up getting a ribbon. I don't know how I got a ribbon for him being so dumb. So um, anyway, whenever, you know, they you stand in the middle of the arena, you know, and then they announce, you know, who won or whatever. And then as you go out of the arena, they hand you, they've got different people that will come up and hand you your ribbons. So anyway, um, we were riding out, and I was going to pick up my ribbon. Well, that particular day, they were also handing out horse treats in a little bag, along with your ribbon, okay? Well, you got to know Cade, because Cade is a trick horse. He is. He does tricks for treats. And so Cade is like, treats yes you know and so he starts lifting up his leg and he lifting up this leg and I'm trying to kick him you know and I've got the treats and you know so we go right over to Candace Candace is sitting on the floor laughing I mean she's literally on the ground laughing so hard because I mean I'm trying to get Kay to, to walk and all he's want to do is hold up his feet you know and he's like no this foot okay no not this foot but I have to show you what he does sometimes. You'll understand. And so I get over to Candace. And I jump off of him. And I say, I'm never going to ride this poop sniffing thoroughbred ever again. And she's like, she was just crying, laughing so hard. I was so mad at him. And all he was wanting were those stinking treats. Because he just kept lifting up his feet, lifting up his feet. And can't, I mean, the more he did it, the I mean, Candace, I thought she was crying. She was laughing so hard. And I just got so mad at him. I was like, you poop sniffing thoroughbred. You're a piece of crap. I'm never going to ride you again. So anyway, yeah, that was so funny. Oh, my word, that was so funny. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to go um, work on my hair here, and uh, I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so this is the final look that I came up with. I was going back and looking, you know, at some of the, the footage that I just did, and I was like, oh, my word, Marsha, that, I mean, that's a long video. So if you are still here, thank you so, so much. But anyway, yeah, I get to talking sometimes, and I just, you know, I just go on and on. But hi, Teddy Cat. Okay, so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw in a giveaway here. So um, what I have got, actually I've got several things, but, I, you know, there's just some things that, you know, I've kind of gotten 
um, in some kits or you know when I got my uh, Beautylish bag so let's go through this real quick I've got a spackle this is called a spackle hydrating moisturizing under makeup primer by Laura Geller it is really nice however I already have one open so this is a brand new one so I'm gonna put that one in there this is a Tula this is the Tula exfoliating treatment mask I love this one but like I said I've already got some in there going on so this is a brand new one I have got a, this is by Posh, and this is Big Fat Yummy Hand Cream. Um, what is this one? In the scent, it's called Fall Down. It's called a Crisp Autumn Delight, a Pear and Cranberry. So there's a little tube of that. And I'm going to throw in a Posh. This is I Love You a whole bunch. This is a Rise and Shine Darling Indulge in Brunchy Perfect. This is the Big Bath Bar. These are really nice. And um, I love these. You can also use um, them to clean your makeup sponges with, you know, and then just go over with a, just a little bit of like a, a real purity or something else. But that gets makeup out really well out of your brushes and stuff. So that's just a little heads up there. I've also got, this is by Zhu Wei, and this is the lip topper that Jeffree Star did. And this is called, um, oh, what are you called? You are called Sweet Tooth. I love this one. It is a very, very uh, vibrant pink, actually. Um, here is mine. Mine is right here. So that's the color that's in here. So it is a brand new one. And I had bought um, that little bear, the Machio Bear. Y'all might remember that little um, uh, thing. There's three lip glosses here. These are just not my colors. So anyway, there's no need for me to hang on to them because I, I just really wouldn't use them. Here is a makeup brush. This is from uh, Wet n Wild. It's just a little uh, shader brush or whatever you want to use it for. Here's another little brush. It's from Laura Geller. It's a double-sided uh, little brush that came in with a kit. So I'm throwing that in. Um, here's another little item from <laughs> Laura Geller. And this is called the uh, Balanced the Baked Balance and Brighten Foundation in Medium. I love this. I already have one. In fact, I have two of them, so I'm going to pass this one over to somebody. And then in my Beautylish bag, I got the uh, little Jouer samples. This is my absolute most favorite all-time highlighter in the whole wide world, and it is called Rose Gold. I love this one. Um, I'm just going to open it up and let you all see. It is beautiful. It's so pretty. So I've got that. And then the last thing that I've got for this giveaway, this is also by Jouer. And this is the Skinny Dip Palette. This has got a lot of the uh, really pretty, beautiful, uh, shimmery um, shadows in here. It's like a little uh, toppers, or you can use them as little uh, toppers for your eyeshadow. They're beautiful. So this is brand new. So anyway, yeah, I want to do a giveaway for you all. So that's going to be in this. Just scroll down, leave me a comment, say, hey, Marcia, put me in the giveaway. That's all I need for you all to do. All right, so that's all That's all that I've got for this video. So we're just going to, we're going to stop here. I appreciate you all so very, very much for hanging out with me. And as always, I wish you all a safe and wonderful day. Bye.